Hey guys, it is Wednesday, May 13th. Um, we are going to be doing American Revolution Lesson 8 today. Today you're going to be reading another chapter called It's War. Um, you're going to be working on subjects, action, verb, agreement with pronouns, and you're going to be doing some vocabulary. So this is a Liberty Kids video. It will be really helpful for you to watch this video before you read the chapter today. Um, it will make a little bit more sense if you watch it beforehand. This is the chapter five vocabulary. This is, there's only one um, slide of vocabulary today. So the first word is front. It's a, the place where fighting happens in a war. Strategic means carefully planned to achieve a specific goal, such as winning a battle or finishing a project. So if you're strategic, you like plan something out and you're really clever about how you did it. Confront means to challenge or fight against. Surrender means to give up or quit. Morale is the confidence or level of enthusiasm one feels. So if there's a lot of high morale, everybody's kind of like, they're really like excited to do something. They're, they're feeling good. Tactics are ways used to achieve a goal. And bleak means depressing, grim, or bad. So if I'm saying like, oh, this looks pretty bleak, I mean, things are not looking very good. So you can read chapter five right now. However, we're going to review subject pronouns. So the other day we talked about subjects and how they're the who or the what in a sentence is doing something. Um, but sometimes instead of saying the actual subject, sorry, my dog is like running back and forth because someone's outside. Instead of saying the subject, like we don't want to repeat somebody's name over ourselves. We're like, Miss Reed went to the store. Miss Reed bought a, a thing of milk. Miss Reed did this. Like I'm saying Miss Reed like a million times. So we replace those with something called a pronoun. So this hopefully is again review for you. Um, remember subject pronouns are I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. Um, I used to do, I used to like teach my kids back in the day when I taught this um, to remember I and we, he and she, it and they and you. So I like just do that automatically because I remember that I and we, he and she, it and they and you. So those are the pronouns that can replace a subject or the who or what is doing something. There's um, different pronouns for the objects in, in another sentence, but we'll get into that eventually down the road probably. But for now, worry about just these pronouns, I and we, he and she, it and they and you. So examples of when what we would use for certain um, subjects and pronouns, like if I'm talking about Miss Reed, the pronoun that would replace Miss Reed is she, and Miss Reed is singular because I'm talking about one person. George Washington, again, one person, singular, I would replace him with he. Um, the book, only one book I'm talking about, singular, I would replace it with it. So I say the book is boring. I change it to it is boring. My mom and I, there's more than one person. There's two people. So this is plural. I would change it to we. And we do this like naturally. You do this without even probably thinking about it. So you just have to think how you would say it in a sentence. So my mom and I went to the store. I would change it to we went to the store. Mrs. H and Mrs. C teach 4C. They teach 4C because I'm talking about more than one person. I'm talking about two people. So they would become they. They would become they. Uh, the dogs and the cats. I say the dogs and the cats are fighting. They are fighting. It's plural. There's more than one. Um, they is pretty much is, is used a lot for plural. So we or they for plural. Um, you can also be used for both plural and for singular. So just depends. You have to pay close attention. So for subject and verb agreement with pronouns, these are the rules. And again, it kind of it depends on whether it's singular or it's plural. So it, she, and he, it's all singular. It follows the same exact rules. Um, for everything, you're pretty much going to add S. So like if I want to say hum, she, hum a melody, I put an S on it. She hums a melody. Um, remember that if something ends in S, S, H, C, H, X, or Z, I add E, S. So it catch on fire. It catches on fire. Can't just add an S. It would look weird. Um, anything that ends with a Y, you change, change the Y to the I and add a E, S. So he dry, he dries, I, E, E, S, the dishes. Remember, this is only for singular pronouns so only when we're talking about one person place or thing if it is plural so or if you have i if i'm saying i did something um you don't change the verb you just keep it the same so i we you and they you don't add anything it does not change so if i want to say we prepare dinner i just literally keep it we prepare dinner or if i want to say i prepare dinner i don't say i prepares even though i'm only talking about one person so i is the exception to the rule so even though I'm only talking about one person, I, I wouldn't say I prepares dinner. It sounds really crazy, right? Or like I hums a melody. I'd say I hum. 
So I don't actually change the verb if I have I. So that's the exception to the rule. I'm actually going to put a star next to that because that's the rule. Same thing with you. Like they're singular. If they're singular, you doesn't always have to be singular. But um, they don't necessarily, they don't follow the rule. They're like the exception to the singular rule. So again, you're going to read chapter five. It's war. Make sure if you're using the audio, you do follow along um, to see the diagrams and the images. Then you're going to complete the Google assignment. So the Google Doc is on subject um, pronoun verb agreement. So you're going to complete that. It looks like this. Right there, and I have the chart up there for you to help you. So, your and I did the first ones for you. So the troops, I'm changing. I'm just changing whatever the original um, noun was to a pronoun, for, and then I'm rewriting it down here. It's pretty easy. Um, then you are going to complete the Google form um, using Chapter Five and Chapter Four vocabulary. It's literally all on vocabulary, and I gave you additional Liberty Kids videos if you want to watch them. So these are just in between the videos um, for tomorrow and whatnot. So you don't have to watch these again, but they're optional. So make sure you're doing your best work. Um, you'll only be entered into the pizza raffle if you are completing everything, including the Google Doc and the Google Form to the best of your ability.